Hey, what's up guys? Totally Dubbed here and today I'm going to give you a video um, of the comparison between Windows 7 and Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 and the comparison between having hyperthreading enabled versus disabled. So I created a thread on overclockers.net and as you can see over here I listed down um, all my test summary. The reason I'm making this video is because there was uh, variances between the beta and the final release and I wanted to share my opinions and thoughts. So I'll link this um, thread that I created in the, uh, in the description below but as you can see when it comes down to the means of all the um, frames per second that I did between Windows 7 and Windows 8, Windows 8 comes very very marginally on top and we are talking about less than about five frames per second on average um, as an increase on Windows 8.1. The variances between the datas were pretty consistent, uh, whereas on the beta they seem to fluctuate quite a lot, but on the final release of uh, Battlefield 4 and on Windows 8.1 and on Windows 7 they seem to be consistent amount of data and all the data I extracted was on playing 64 player maps whilst playing at 1080p on ultra with a field of view at 90 and motion blur at 0 so these results always are going to vary because they're on a 64 player map and they're always different results however it's the best way to give you data rather than give you stalemate data which is from single player or from a empty server and doing um, re repeat, repeated tests. I feel that if you realistically want to know your frames per second and you want to see how it's going to perform in different operating systems you better put it to the test and better put it to a realistic test of how other users will be playing the game. So 64 player being the biggest, uh, far, uh, biggest amount of players you can have on a map means it's the most stressful that your um, graphics card is going to have to work because you're going to have bigger firefights and therefore uh, lower drops, uh, bigger drops sorry, of frames per second. In terms of hyper-threading, there was um, mild differences uh, between Windows 7 and Windows 8. I must say that with hyper-threading disabled on Windows 7, you had an increase of about 20% to 30% of the CPU usage. And on Windows 8, you had an increase of about 20%. Now you might think, oh, there's only a low, you know, lower amount of increase on Windows 8. I would agree, but the CPU usage on Windows 8.1 was much higher than Windows 7, both with hyperthreading enabled or hyperthreading disabled. Now what does higher CPU usage mean? Well, I didn't really notice any differences in frames or any stuttering or whatnot, but from folding experience I know that if your CPU usage is going to be really high and if you want to run at a higher resolution, um, say 1440p, or you want to do multi-screen, or you have a SLI setup, then a high CPU usage is going to bottleneck. That means your CPU is going to be bottlenecked. So hyper-threading on Windows 8.1 is a definite must in my opinion, but on Windows 7 not so much because uh, Windows 7 seems to handle it much better. I'm a big fan of Windows 7 and I didn't really like Windows 8, but in this comparison I was very much objective rather than subjective. All the data I got was really honest data, there was no tampering around with any sort of data or anything like that. Some people might believe that because of my dislike of Windows 8, but in all honesty, if you don't believe me, then try it out yourselves. My setup was quite simple. It was an i7-3770K running at 4.5 GHz with a stable overclock. I had an MSI GTX 680 Twin Forza 3 overclocked edition. I had 16 GB of RAM, which is the Corsair Vengeance RAM running at 1600 MHz, running at 999-24-2N timings, and I had the Asus Sabre 2 Z77. The only difference between my Windows 7 and Windows 8, or should I say 8.1 installation, was the fact that my Windows 7 was running on a Force GT SSD, and my Windows 8 installation was running on a Samsung hard drive. What does that mean? Well, it meant no difference in frames a second, 
but because I installed window on, on my Windows 7 installation, I installed Battlefield on the hard, um, on my external hard drive, and I didn't realize um, any sort of FPS drops. The only thing I did realize that uh, the game loaded. 10 times much quicker on an SSD than it did on a hard drive. Apart from that, there is no frames per second difference between um, running your Battlefield on a hard drive or SSD. That's all that the difference is, is to do with load times. So, therefore, I could provide a really fair comparison. And when I looked back at the beta results, now the beta results were based a little bit differently, and the reason behind that was because. Um, I installed Windows 8.1, I updated it from Windows 8, so on the beta I was running Windows 8, on the final release I was running Windows 8.1. But that said, I did do some personal benchmarks myself of Windows 8 versus 8.1 whilst the final release was out, and I did not uh, notice any differences between frames per second between Windows 8 and 8.1, so there was no improvements of frames per second between them. But on a personal note, I would suggest upgrading to 8.1 if you're a Windows 8 user because it's free and the changes that uh, Microsoft made were positive. So I highly suggest updating. Apart from that, my uh, my RAM had increased from 8GB to 16GB. Uh, the reason behind that is because 8GB of mine was in my mum's PC and I decided to take it back from my mum's PC and put it back on my PC and extend my... Um, my RAM to 16 gigabytes. The reason I did that is because it gives me a little bit extra headroom because on the beta I noticed that 6.5 gigabytes of usage was on the RAM which was really really high. So on uh, on the final release with uh, hyperthreading um, enabled I wasn't looking at such a high usage but I was still looking about 5.5 gigabytes to 6 gigabytes of usage. So that was something to note. So apart from those real differences between the beta and the final release in terms of my setup, what I noted was that uh, on the beta I had a lot of stuttering when I had hyperthreading disabled, but on the final release um, all the stuttering problems had disappeared. With that said, on the beta the frames per seconds were also quite lower. Um, I had a lower uh, frames per second on minimum and on, um, on average. And more so, the results that I had, both on Windows 7 and Windows 8 at the time on the beta, were inconsistent. There were quite a lot of variances between them. But on the final release, I had a more consistent um, frames per second, uh, no matter what map I was on. And I tested all of these benchmarks on variant, um, a variety of maps and a variety of game modes. And I realized that it was more consistent data that I was getting from the final release. So what am I trying to say with this video? Well, I'm trying to say that hyperthreading does affect Battlefield 4 in terms of performance. You're not going to see a frames per second difference, but it's going to cause a lower strain on your um, CPU. Also, having Windows 7 seems to be better, at least for me, in terms of your CPU usage. But for overall frames per second, Windows 8.1 takes the cake, but only by, by a slight margin. So the in conclusion, what I was trying to say is that is it worth upgrading to Windows 8.1 from Windows 7 because of frames per second and or performance? No, actually hell no. I would never upgrade to Windows 8 or 8.1 um, for Battlefield 4 and a lot of people have and have been reporting like 40 frames per second increase and whatnot which I think is absolutely um, preposterous and kind of ridiculous. Sure, it might work better for them on their setup, I don't know what they're doing to their setup, but for me, for having two um, Windows installs running on the same system and just two different hard drives, I noticed very, very minimal differences. In fact, unparking cores made more of a difference. On parking cores is something quite um, interesting, and I'll link down um, a video from X, uh, Rival X Factor and a website on where to unpark your cores to get the program to do that. But I highly suggest unparking your cores, be it on Windows 7 or Windows 8, because what it does is that it helps your maximum and minimum um, frames per second. 
it boosts them just a little bit by 5 to 10 frames per second and therefore gives you a little bit better averages. I saw my averages increase by about under 5 frames per second which is quite substantial if you think about it. Um, and I do think that was a big gain. On parking cores, it's absolutely free, and all that means is that you get better performance from your CPU. And obviously, on parking cores, it's mainly applied to hyper, -thread, uh, hyper threading um, uh, CPUs. But that said, when I, I turned hyper threading off and was on Windows 8.1, I still unparked my cores because there were parked cores. So. You should bear that in mind and you should definitely take that on board and I definitely think on parking cores is a much better solution for people having problems on their um, on their Windows installation be it Windows 8.1 or 7 and therefore you'll get better increases. I, I also should say I would suggest getting a hyper threading CPU if you are building a PC right now but I would not upgrade my uh, PC um, if I didn't have a hyper threading uh, PC. By that I mean if I had an i5 right now, a uh, 357OK, I would not be upgrading to an i7 simply because of Battlefield 4. It is early days so far for hyper threading but it seems like games nowadays are using more threads than they used to and which is a good sign because it's utilizing the PC um, a, a, a fuller potential, but i5 users out there, if you're um, if you're already on, um, you already have built your PC and you're looking to upgrade, then you might want to consider a hyper-threading CPU, be it AMD or Intel. But you do not need to upgrade if you do not want to. Do not be forced to upgrade and do not be led to believe that, oh, I need to hyper-thread in order to get better performance. No, that's wrong. Uh, it was right in the beta, don't get me wrong, but in the final release, there is no difference. There's no stuttering, there's no uh, GPU spikes, um, there's nothing in, in that respect. So, guys with i5s there, don't be worried. And guys on Windows 7, uh, please stop uh, listening to people uh, which are telling you that you need to get Windows 8 because they're a bit of Microsoft fanboys. Um, I don't see the need of it. If you like Windows 8, go for it, but you're not going to see much of a performance um, increase. So there we go. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, do check the description for links below. I highly suggest you check them out. And do not forget to subscribe, like and comment on your opinions of the, the benchmarks or how the data was presented or your experiences yourselves on, um, on Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1, the beta or hyper-threading uh, enabled or disabled. Hopefully uh, this information has been useful to you and uh, hopefully this gives you enough information to make your purchasing decisions and um, uh, opinions about Battlefield 4 in terms of frame rates. Alright guys, hope you've enjoyed this video. Totally dubbed out. Bye bye.